What are the best iron food sources? Do we need to eat a steak to get iron? Do we need iron supplements? Iron is one of the most misunderstood nutrients. So today we're gonna to cover everything we need to know to just enjoy our food and stop worrying about iron so much. All right, quick question just for fun. Which food has the most iron? Is it beef, lentils, milk, or chia seeds? Pause the video if you need more time. Answers coming up in two, one, and here are the answers. A three ounce serving of steak has about 14% of the daily needs for the average woman. Men need a lot less iron. We'll come back to this in a minute. How about the same amount of lentils? 15.5, just slightly more, almost same. Milk, no iron in milk, basically zero. How about chia? A whopping 77%. Chia's got iron for days. Even if you took a much smaller amount, just two tablespoons of chia, that's basically one of those little chia puddings. That's almost 20% of your iron needs right there. And that stuff is delicious. So does that mean everybody needs to be eating chia all day? Of course not. You can if you want to, and they're fantastic. But you don't have to, because iron is everywhere. Here's chickpeas, here's steamed spinach, here's sesame seeds, this is eggs, and that's liver. Okay, I think the point is clear. Just like we saw with protein before, iron is everywhere and in large amounts. We can get all the iron we need from animal foods or from plant foods. It's your choice. So many people worried about getting enough iron, about iron deficiency, iron foods, iron supplements, and yet it's so abundant. You could almost say it's ironic, but I'm not gonna say that. No puns in this video. I'm gonna keep it professional. Okay, great, so iron's abundant, plenty of good food sources of iron, but so far we've only looked at isolated foods. What I wanna know is at the end of the day, after I've had all my meals, 15, 20 different types of food all mixed, do I get all the iron I need? In the protein videos, I use this example. Breakfast, oatmeal and a peanut butter sandwich. Later in the morning, handful of almonds. Lunch is lentils, rice, and broccoli with a banana for dessert. And dinner is tempeh with mixed veggies. Okay, that example is all light meals. In fact, it only has about 1,500 calories, 2,000 being the ballpark goal for a day. So it's nowhere near a full day of eating, yet it already maxes out iron needs for women. If you're a man, you've already had 230% of your daily needs, and you still have 500 calories to go. So finding iron in foods, not a problem. So if you like meat and you want to eat it, that's totally up to you. But don't let anybody tell you that you need meat for iron, and that if you don't have a steak, you're gonna be anemic. Plant foods have boatloads of iron. Wait, hold on a second. Fine, plants have iron, but iron isn't all created equal. Isn't the iron in meat absorbed better, like more bioavailable? There are two types of iron, heme and non-heme. Meat has both types, while plant foods like lentils and sesame seeds only have non-heme iron. So is it true that heme iron is better absorbed? The answer is, it depends. The amount of iron that actually gets absorbed into your body depends on what else is in your food. For example, vitamin C is a major factor. If there's no vitamin C in sight, we can absorb more iron from a meal containing meat than a meal without it. But if vitamin C is present, the difference goes away. So does that mean if I don't eat meat, I need to eat an orange at every meal to get my iron? Not at all. Vitamin C is in all kinds of fruits and vegetables. A small stalk of broccoli or half a bell pepper would give you enough vitamin C to get this effect. Coffee and tea can also influence the absorption of non-heme iron, but they have the opposite effect of vitamin C. Instead of helping, they block absorption. So if you have trouble getting enough iron, you may wanna have your coffee and tea in between, not during meals. Okay, so if heme and non-heme iron are absorbed differently, sounds like the best bet is to just mix it up and have a bit of both, right? Some steak, some lentils. The problem is absorption is not their only difference. The long-term health effects of heme and non-heme are also massively different. Heme iron has been tied to higher risk of disease over and over again. Higher risk of cardiovascular disease, higher risk of cancer, higher risk of diabetes. And this seems specific to heme iron, the type found in meat. How big is the risk? Each additional milligram of heme iron consumed daily has been associated to anywhere between seven and 27% higher risk of cardiovascular disease. Again, that's per milligram. We need multiple milligrams of iron per day. Eight for men, 18 for women. So these studies strongly suggest we lean as much as possible on non-heme iron to meet our daily requirements. And as we've seen, that isn't hard at all. Even light meals with plant foods have plenty of iron. Studies confirm meat-free diets can actually contain more iron, and people who don't eat meat don't have higher risk of iron anemia. So all that iron in the plants is effectively absorbed and utilized. No problem. Now, all of that said, if you're somebody who has trouble getting enough iron, if you suffer from iron deficiency anemia, then of course you wanna work with your doctor, and in some cases, a supplement may be justified. Studies do show huge differences in iron absorption between different people. So if you have trouble getting enough iron, then these little tricks we talked about, 
become even more important, including veggies with your meals, especially vitamin C rich ones like broccoli and bell peppers, or sprinkling some lemon on your legumes, avoiding having coffee and tea with your meals. And you can also consider iron fortified cereals if you need that extra boost. Playing with all these factors can increase iron absorption by up to 10 times. By getting as much as possible of our iron from plant foods, we're also getting the healthiest kind, non-heme, which helps keep our risk of disease as low as possible. Not a bad deal. See, I kept it professional the whole way through. No lame puns, didn't say anything was ironic, didn't say the issue of iron was a magnet for controversy, none of that lame stuff. Just kept it professional, focused, just for you, resisted it. It was hard, it was tempting, but I resisted it. Resisted it with an iron wheel. Ah, fuck. All right, that's it for today. If you found this helpful, feel free to share it, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you